the most diagnostic uh, test for such a person is a CT scan and once a diagnosis of stone is made, you then decide whether you can manage him with medication or he requires a surgical procedure. Fortunately, most surgical procedures now have become practically non-invasive because we don't cut for stone at all. Like Hippocrates mentioned in his famous oath that you cut for stone, I will not cut for stone, we don't cut for stone. And what we do is we use lasers. By lasers with endoscopy, we are able to treat all these stones satisfactorily. In fact, now we have lasers available which allow us to treat previously untreatable stones such as the kidney stones without making any kind of an incision even for a telescope on the body. And we are able to use the normal orifices of the body to remove all such stones. Uh, laser surgery using holmium laser is one of the safest modalities for treating uh, urinary stones and there are very very few side effects or risks associated with it. Having said that, we must understand that all procedures have some inherent risks and the possibility of acquiring a infection and infection is a possibility which should be borne in mind. Hence, these patients are put on antibiotics pre and post operatively. Usually, these are the uh, most important side effects that a person may face and there could be some minor effects such as some difficulty in urination or some persistent pain which may persist for a short period following procedure. Most people usually recover uh, without any, uh, any significant side effects. What I am referring to is a procedure which is called flexible ureteroscopy or retrograde intrarenal surgery. Now these are complex terms. How do I simplify it? So it is basically a procedure by which a tube or a, an instrument can be made to flex. So it is something which is very flexible. It is something which can actually travel through various directions and travel into various orifices, be maneuverable, be manipulatable into these orifices and by using an energy source we can fragment stones after having uh, reached that particular location. So in, again in simpler terms you go through a natural orifice through which the urine passes out of the body, you travel along this right up to the kidney, you actually, uh, you're actually like driving a car. So you can actually turn left, turn right, go in any direction that you want to. And it actually allows you to turn 360 degrees. So you're able to actually manipulate it into various corners of the kidney, pick up stones from there and fragment it with laser. This was something which was not possible till even about four or five years ago. But technology has now made it possible for us to be able to travel into these very corners of the kidney, destroy the stones there and with all of this cause little or minimal influence on the kidney actually or on the rest of the body. So it's a very very non-invasive procedure. And we are using the latest uh, Holmium laser 100 watt uh, luminous machine which is standard uh, state of the art machine worldwide right now and we are using a Carl Stowe's Flex2 uh, flexible ureteroscope which again is state of the art worldwide. So we are using the really top of the line instrumentation for our procedures to make sure that the patient is safeguarded against all risks. Usually most patients with stone disease who come to me ask me one simple question and that is will it happen again? And I tell them that you will definitely form a stone again if you don't prevent it. And prevention is a very important part of post-operative management of any patient with stone disease. So what they have to understand is that uh, treating the stone was only 50% of the job done and the other 50% of the job is preventing a stone and for that they will be put on certain medication, they will be put on certain kind of diet restrictions, they will be put on certain kinds of fluid advices, so they will be following those. Uh, specific to the procedure, it's usually a very very uh, fast recovering procedure, so most patients actually return to work the next day itself and we just advise them to have lots of fluids when they've gone back to work. 